It's that time of year, folks, where it's time to make some tough decisions on what you're going to do. Well, I suppose if you have to deal with snow removal. And the old standby that basically every tractor has these days is a loader with a bucket on it. All right. And I want to put this out there right away. You know what? You can remove snow with your bucket. A lot of folks do, and they get the job done. They've done it for years. But it doesn't mean that there's not better tools that are designed to remove snow and make your life easier, along with some other benefits too. So I want to compare, okay, a couple of things that look fairly similar, really. You know, a bucket versus a snow pusher today. And a snow pusher is the number one most popular snow removal tool that we sell. Way more than plow blades, more than snow blowers, more than rear blades, more than anything else. They, they, they far, they, we sell more of these than all the other ones combined, all right? So these are a very popular item, but not just any snow pusher, it is the HLA snow pusher. And so I wanna go into the specifics of this snow pusher a little bit later on, but let's talk about these two here and what the differences are, all right? Because one tool is designed to dig and hold material. Another is designed to release and to move material, all right? So there's two different concepts there at the, at the heart of it. And so if we talk about a bucket in general, this is, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if we're talking about bigger Kubotas like this, or if we're talking about John Deere 1025 bars, Kubota BX, some compacts or anything else small or anywhere in the middle, all right? The same functionality applies where this is designed to go into a pile of dirt, into a pile of mulch, stone, whatever it is, dig into it, pick it up, and then go dump it somewhere else. With a snow pusher, there is no bottom, all right? And so there's nothing for it to dig in and hold material at all. It is not designed to do that. It is designed to collect the material with the sides that are on the left and the right. And then the big back, that it's all gonna trap the material in there. You're gonna keep this on the ground, moving it along from, from point A and gathering more all the way until you get to point B where you're gonna unload it. And you can of course stack with pushers as well. You just drive that pile of snow right up on top of what you have already and then back up and release it. So with a bucket, that's where one of the big issues can come into play. And this doesn't matter what type of driveway you have, if it's concrete, if it's asphalt, if it's gravel or dirt or millings or anything else, but they're very good at digging. And so that means they wanna dig and scrape along any surface that they're on. And so you can easily damage a concrete driveway, a, an asphalt driveway, you know, if you have concrete edges, um, or if maybe if you have a crack in there already and it catches that, or just the seams in there. Same thing with asphalt, if you have um, where it's been um, tar filled and, and everything else over the years too, it can catch on that and rip that away very easily, causing damage in the winter. On gravel, on millings, of course, they're not gonna be perfectly level and smooth. And so that's easy to catch some of the stone in there and pile that up off your driveway somewhere or compound the issue further if you grab it too aggressively and dig a big trench in there accidentally. So you experienced operators out there are never gonna have this issue, <laughs> but a lot of tractor owners out there are new and don't have years of experience or maybe don't want to have that learning curve. Me, I'm not new, but I don't have 40 years of experience either. I'm somewhere in the middle. I still, I've tried using a bucket before and it's, it's just not for me. So you're not gonna get much cheaper than having your existing bucket and using it for snow. So there's something to be said for that, but the trade-offs are potential cost with damage to your driveway and then also cost with potential damage to your bucket as well. You know, that, that main leading edge there, when you're hitting something with it, if you're on your driveway, there shouldn't be a lot of obstacles, right? But if you're in a country area or maybe you push the snow off of the driveway, well, this is gonna be easy to ram into something hidden in the snow and damage that or potentially damage the bottom edge of your bucket too. Maybe tweaking something if you're hitting it off center, say you hit something really hard over here with that flat edge, there's, there's no real give, right? And so it could be easy to, to tweak your loader arms that way, but potentially you're gonna round these corners. That's where a lot of the damage comes into play is rounding the corners of your bucket. They tend to wear quickly, uh, quicker than the rest of the edge. And so it's gonna make it more challenging for you down the road when you're using it in all the other seasons to do your work to have an easier digging tool that you bought it for in the first place. Now, some buckets are gonna be pre-drilled. Now, this bucket is not pre-drilled. I just got this tractor and it's kind of surprising to see any bucket on a tractor this size not pre-drilled, but that's the case. So you could add a replaceable cutting edge on here. So we sell UHMW cutting edges um, that you can you could drill this out or if yours is already pre-drilled, then you don't have to worry about that, but put some holes every maybe six, eight, 10 inches somewhere in there, space it out and then put an edge on the bottom. So you're saving 
this bucket edge from damage and then that UHMW, if you have concrete or asphalt, you're saving that too from the wear because the UHMW is a protective material. It's gonna be very safe for concrete, asphalt, pavers, bricks, that kind of thing. Still scrape really well, give a barrier or a buffer between the two surfaces and make it easier as far as that goes. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, so a little bit more on the difference between holding material versus pushing it along. And so this comes into efficiency. If you have a very small area to clear, this isn't gonna be that big of a deal, but the bigger the area that you have to clear and the more repetitions that you have to do with clearing a lane and maybe backing up or turning around and going the other way, this becomes very tedious, especially when you have to do it all winter long and then year after year. But with a bucket, when you push forward and you have your load of snow and you go to move it wherever, you have to pick it up, shake it, around to release all the snow that's trapped in here. It just, it just stays trapped in here. It's too much of it stays stuck. You have no idea how much it's releasing. And so you gotta shake it out really good and then reset it down on the ground to get that same level to, to push at again. With a snow pusher, you don't have to do that. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing to trap, there's no bottom. So the snow just is sitting there. And with the HLA design to pick up on that a little bit, the back is radius or it's rolled, all right? And so, that helps the snow to roll forward, to continuously have momentum going forward as you're pushing along. And so it's not just sitting there being stuck and trapped because that's not the design. The design is to keep the snow moving forward to get it to where you need to go as quickly and efficiently and make it less work for the tractor to do so and then release it without having to make any adjustments to have to shake your, your pusher or anything like that. You don't have to do that. The other reason the HLA pushers are different than other pushers are because of the sidewall here. You're gonna see there's no bracing between the sidewall and the back wall. And so most, not all, but most of the other pushers out there are gonna have a brace that goes across there and that does trap snow. They're gonna have a vertical back on there, maybe an angled back, but it's not gonna be radius and rolled. And this is gonna trap snow and you are gonna have some loss of efficiency there because they're gonna have stuff trapped in there all the time. They're gonna be pushing along and it's not gonna release and stay where you want it to be without doing shaking, that shaking effect that we're talking about. So. Again, small scale, no big deal. But the more that you're doing it, or if you just are annoyed by things that don't work the way that you want them to, then that would be another reason to consider a pusher. Never gonna be cheaper than using the bucket you already have though. And another visual indicator, hopefully you can pick up on this, is the fact that, well, this is a bigger tractor, that's a smaller tractor. But if you look at the dimensions of that pusher, you can fit a lot more snow in here than you can in the bucket that came with your tractor, all right? So if we're talking a small area, that's not really significant, but the bigger the area that you're doing and the more often you have to do it, the more that becomes just a pain, right? And so maybe it's your favorite thing in the world to go out there and move snow and you got nothing better to do and it's your, the dream, right? Great, more power to you. But if you wanna make your life more efficient or you're looking for that tool, well, a pusher would be something to consider. The bigger tractor, smaller bucket on here, all right? You can put a bigger pusher on there and move things along, get the job done quicker. And so a fun thing to do with a snow pusher, and one of the, the great things about these HLAs are their, their back drag that they have on here. It's a very substantial back drag. This is the 2500 series. Now, most of our audience that's watching are gonna use actually a 1500, 1800 series, and there's not gonna be an open gap here. It's gonna be, it's a smaller pusher. And so this, this back drag would basically be shifted back here a bit and there'd be no gap. It'd be a solid top on here. And so when you're back dragging, which is a super, super handy thing to be able to do with a snow pusher, you can pull snow away from a garage door. You can pull it away from a retaining wall, from a parked car. If you can't push the snow forward, you can use your back drag to roll forward and make this front edge. This is your cutting edge then. And you drop that down and pull the snow away. It's a super handy thing to do. Again, you can trap all the snow inside here. And while you can back drag with a bucket, again, these, these are... These are just different ways to skin a cat, right? You can back drag with this, but you're gonna have this bottom edge down here. This is gonna be your back drag edge. There's nothing to trap in any snow on the sides. There's no volume that you can really collect in there. You can get the job done, but if you want a more efficient tool, again, it gets back to how often you're doing this, 
you, you just can't beat a snow pusher to do it. And in, in particular, an HLA snow pusher, you're not going to see a fully enclosed back drag from any other brand that's out there on the 1500 and the 1800, the smaller stuff that works for all the compact tractors. You're just not going to see it. It's far and away the best one that's out there. I could, I could easily carry one of 10 different manufacturers of snow pushers if I wanted to. I choose to carry the HLA. They are not the cheapest, but their construction, their their features, just the way that they're put together and, and the way that HLA thought about it helps them sell themselves. They just need people to see what they are and then decide, hey, if I'm going to have a snow pusher for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, is it worth paying? Maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 30% more. I don't know. But over the course of 5, 10, 15, 20 years, is it worth paying for a better product a bit more to have this better tool? And me personally, I regret it. I, I, I've done it often enough on trailers, on trucks, on gun safes, on basically anything that I buy where I regret not just getting what I should have got the first time because I know eventually I'm going to wind up getting that anyways. And I've learned to just get the right thing for me the first time and bite the bullet, get it done. So some other features about the HLA snow pushers. Again, these are designed for snow removal. All right. And so everything about them is bolt together design so they are adaptable if your situation if your needs change too if you wear out the edges or the skid runners down here you can replace them and on the the edges you can actually flip them over and use the other side so you can get double the life out of the edge there so to speak and these are thick beefy edges the uhmw that we use is I don't know anybody else that sells thicker, beefier stuff than we do. And that's on purpose, right? Even the skinnier stuff for snow plows and for um, uh, rear blades and, and items like that, it's three quarters of an inch thick. And you're going to see most of the competition out there sells half inch or three eighths. We went three quarters of an inch thick. We went beefier and heavier duty. I just wanted to get better bang for the buck whenever I could. And that's no exception on the edges for the snow pushers that are one and a quarter inches thick. The skid runners are um, an inch and a half to two inches thick, depending on what series you have there as well. So heavy duty material. I can't stress it enough. We wanted to make sure these were built heavy duty all the way around. Uh, you're going to notice that even the frames are bolted on. So if you wound up getting a, a global, a, a tractor with a global quick attach later on, or a John Deere quick attach or vice versa, this has a skid steer quick attach, you can unbolt the frame and then just buy a new frame. You don't have to buy the entire new pusher. So if your needs change, again, you have the flexibility there to get into the right equipment at a lot lower cost. So if you want to buy it without a back drag, because you're like, Courtney, I'm not sold on the back drag. I don't have a need, right? Or maybe you don't have a pull bar now, but you're going to put one up down the road, buy it without the back drag, and then you can bolt on. You can buy and bolt on the back drag down the road. Or Let's say you have a gravel driveway now and you're going to pave it in the future. Well, go with steel skid runners. Go with a steel edge now. That's all you need. And then down the road, when you upgrade your driveway and get concrete or, or asphalt, you can upgrade your edges and your runners as well. They just bolt right on. So in my opinion, a bucket is better than a snow pusher in one area, and that is price. Because you already have it, more than likely. Other than that, though, if you're looking to protect your driveway, if you want to extend the life of your bucket, don't use it for snow. If you want to get your jobs done faster, all these reasons are, are great ones to use a pusher. You can push the same kind of snow with either one, right? You can push two inches of snow. You can push a foot of snow. You can push the light fluffy stuff, the wet heavy stuff. You can stack it. You can do all the same things. You're just going to do it a lot better with a snow pusher. And you're potentially, I'm not going to say this is guaranteed to happen, but potentially you're going to save money by not causing damage to your bucket or to the plowing surface by using the right tool. And so that delta of zero cost just by using your existing bucket versus a couple thousand, three thousand, four thousand, whatever it is for the size of pusher that you need. Well, that that gap there between zero and four thousand could shrink significantly over the years as you cause less damage to whatever surface it is you're plowing. And maybe this comes out ahead. So again, if you're watching this video, I think you're already maybe wondering what way I should go. Maybe you can get by with this now. Maybe you're planning for the future. But if you are planning for the future or thinking about a snow pusher, I would strongly consider the HLA for all the features that we talked about here. These things are made up in Canada and they know a little bit about snow up there, but they know what they're doing. I honestly, I don't know of a single warranty claim that comes to mind on an HLA snow pusher. 
They are built so well. And again, it's, I could sell any of them out there that I want to, I don't. I just keep selling these guys because they're just amazing. I love them. So we ship all over the country. You can get what you need at goodworkstractors.com. You can see all the pricing, the options, the configuration. If you don't know what size to get, just send us an email. We just need your tractor making your model. If you know if you have a John Deere Quick Attach, a Skid Steer Quick Attach, a Global Quick Attach, a Yanmark Quick Attach, we can help with all those. If you have a pinned on bucket, we can help with that too. It's gonna to cost a little bit extra. You, know, you may have about a four to six month lead time to get that custom made mount back there. So plan ahead for that, all right? You know, order in the spring so you can have it next fall and have it all winter long then. But goodworkstractors.com, we'd love to help you out. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.